So the last class that we're going to talk about in this chapter is going to be, or in this part of the notes, um, is going to be class amphibia. So amphibians are going to be frogs, salamanders, and what are called cephalians, which you'll see in a second. So these guys are going to make that transition from the water onto land. So they're going to have to have some sort of characteristics to help them do that. So one thing that's going to be important that m the majority of amphibians are going to have is going to be legs, right? So if you're going from water onto land, that would be a nice thing to have. Um, another thing that they're going to be able to do is something called cutaneous respiration. So cutaneous is always talking about through the skin, and um, so what that means is they can breathe through their skin. They don't expressly breathe, breathe, uh, expressly breathe through their skin. They actually supplement their breathing through that. Um, another thing, they're going to have lungs. Obviously, they're not going to have gills if they're going to be coming onto land. Um, pulmonary veins, and so I should mention we're going to start to um, look at the circulatory systems of these different organisms as we go more and more advanced. And what you'll find is the heart tends to be the real way that we can tell things that are a little bit more advanced than others. Um, and then they're going to have, like we were saying before, um, partially divided heart. So what that means is they do have some sort of a wall separating oxygen rich and oxygen poor blood, but the third chamber in their heart actually doesn't have a good division, and so oxygen rich and oxygen poor blood do tend to mix. Okay, so um, as, you'll, as I said, when we start talking about different organisms, you'll see how they become a little bit more advanced as far as the heart goes. So there are going to be three orders of the class amphibia that you're going to want to know. Um, so I'll tell you right now, ura means tail, or neura means tail, and a in front of something means they don't have it, right? So order a neura are going to be ones that do not have a tail. Um, so that's going to be frogs and toads. Excellent jumpers, they tend to be carnivorous, they go through metamorphosis, meaning that they start out as tadpoles and they look completely different as an adult, right, with legs. Then the next group is going to be Eurodella, so Euro is tail. So these are going to be amphibians that do have a tail. So you've got your salamanders and your newts, that type of thing. And then the last group is Apoda. So hopefully you remember that poda means foot. A in front of something means they don't have it. So these are going to be these legless worm-like amphibians that you find in like leaf litter, and um, they really are a strange looking organism. So Going back to this, we're done with the fishes. We can take a look, oops, at, not that one. Oh boy, now I'm skipping all around. Here it is, um, at this slide, and this one is going to show you the three types, right? So Eurodella means they have a tail, so those are gonna be like salamanders. Then you have Aneura, which are gonna be the ones that do not have a tail, and so those are gonna be frogs and toads. And then Apoda are gonna be those cephalians, and there they are, kinda of looks like a worm. The difference between them and a worm is that they have a vertebral column, right? A worm wouldn't. Um, so that's going to be the amphibians. So now we're gonna get into chapter 34, part two, and we'll talk about um, birds and mammals and, those, and reptiles.